Hello my name's Mel, welcome to my world and for those of you that are new to my channel it's all about self-built camper vans and camper van related stuff so if that's something to interest you please do consider subscribing to my channel now today is a beautiful sunny day so I'm on the roof of Rebecca's van I'm going to remove her skylight and the reason I'm going to remove this skylight is because it hasn't been fitted properly whoever fitted this didn't cut the hole big enough in the roof so although the skylight fits through the hole on the inside the internal parts of the skylight the frame and the blind and everything simply won't fit up because the hole in the roof is too small it's only 380 mil square and it needs a 402 mil square hole and not only that it leaks as well so it's got to come off so that i can reseal it so because i'm going to re be removing it to reseal it i might as well cut the hole bigger and fit it properly like it should have been done in the first place See how difficult this is to remove. I've got to try and cut this seal, and the seal they used is the same silicon um, bonding agent that you use for windscreens. And from experience, I know it's pretty tough stuff. Yeah, I'll let you know. I get on. I think it's just a case of just keep slicing at it and working my way around. So uh, I won't film all this. I'll get back to you when I've got it off. It's pretty tough stuff. There you go. <laughs> You can actually see here that the rubber hasn't even stuck to the skylight. It's just sitting there. And that's why it's leaking. But oh well, I've got to clean all this off now. Clean all this off the actual skylight. Clean it all off of the roof and then make this hole bigger and then reassemble it and refit it. Let's just put that to one side for now. So now all I've got to do is clean all this off of here. And that is going to be a major task, getting this rubber stuff off. Right. Now I've managed to clean off as much as possible the black window sealer stuff that went, that they used around this skylight. And now I've cleaned all that off, most of it. I'm now going to cut the hole out and make it a little bit bigger. And to do that, I'm going to use my old jigsaw. Now, I've said this once, and I've said it in about four different videos take this foot off it's so much easier to get in all those undulations and you can also turn the saw an angle if you need to just use this wheel on here as a guide lay this flat onto the metal that's all you need to do it makes it so much simpler all right let's get cutting where do i start yes. <laughs> see what I mean about the foot if I had the big foot on this I would no way I'd be able to get that close to this ridge see because I've got the wheel on there it's so much easier to do it so please do whenever you're cutting holes in your roof take the foot off of your jigsaw
Now after cutting the skylight hole a little bit bigger, I've put the skylight back in place and to seal it, I use this mastic sealing strip. And if you've seen my videos before, you'll know I'm a big fan of this stuff. I don't like using mastic from a mastic gun. I prefer to use this strip. And the reason is because it comes in a nice big thick roll like this. And as you put it down onto the roof, you can layer it up and bridge those gaps. I'll just move you back a bit and I'll show you what I mean. There you go, you can see the gaps there. You can see I've layered it to get over this rib. I just simply do a couple of layers. And in this instance, I've actually layered it over onto the top of the skylight as well, just for that added um, peace of mind, really. But I've had to do it really quickly. I didn't film it, because it does look like it's gonna start raining any minute now. If you can see the clouds behind me, they are really dark, which is typical. It seems every time I cut a hole in the roof, the weather changes the minute I'll get my axor out. So anyway, that's that done, that's top side done. It's all sealed up, so now I need to get inside the van and sort out the, the grill and everything from inside. Right, I'm gonna clean all this stuff off the roof before it does actually start to rain. Back in a moment. <laughs> well, here we are inside the van. Now, I really don't like this type of ceiling fan because it's only got one clip per edge and that's these clips here. Literally, I'll bring you up closer so you can see that clip is all that holds that in place and there's one in each edge. There's nothing in the corners, which I don't know, maybe this fan really is just for caravans with a nice flat roof. If you've got a corrugated roof, like on a van for instance, you really need screws all the way around to squeeze it down and make sure that mastic is squeezed between the fan and the ceiling. With these clips, it's a bit uh, it a miss, I think, if it's gonna leak or not. For the first time ever, I'm gonna say, I'm about 90% sure it won't leak. Now the problem I've got is that this inner part is supposed to fit flush like this. And then that outer part clips over and it leaves a nice finish. But the hole in the roof is way too big as you can see. If I hold it in there like that, that's supposed to go in like that. And as you can see it just disappears up inside the hole. It's meant to go up flush with the ceiling. So that's the problem I've got and I think the only way I'm going to be able to get around this is to make like a picture frame, just to build that, make that orifice a little bit smaller. Yeah. It's just way too big I'm afraid. So uh, I think all I'm gonna be able to do is use some cladding maybe. Like this really thin, my favorite, <laughs> seven and a half mil cladding. I'm gonna cut this in half and then make some kind of picture frame effect around that. Hopefully it doesn't look too shabby. All right, I'll get right back to you when I've done that. I've figured out how I'm gonna line it all up as well, getting this all squared up, because it's not a square, it's actually oblong, um, for some strange reason. Yeah, I don't know why they've done it like that, but you can see this is square. This is the 400 by 400 square of the fan. Then the frame is a little bit longer. It's probably because of the roller blind. Yeah, I'd imagine that's why. Anyway, let's try and make some kind of picture frame to uh, make this hole smaller. Be right back. Okay, so I've cut one piece of my picture frame. I'm gonna use this as a template as long as it fits. All I need to do is cut another three of these, then I've got four sides. Pretty obvious, right? <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to state the obvious. I just wanna check that it is actually wide enough first to make sure that I've got enough here. And I think, looking at that, it's gonna be plenty wide enough. In fact, probably a little bit too wide, but nevertheless, it's gonna work. That's the main thing. Now, to make this template, all I used was a simple handsaw to get these nice angles. So this is gonna be what it's gonna end up looking like. This is just the off cut, just to demonstrate how it's gonna look like that. Now, to get these perfect angles, you don't need any fancy tools, no fancy jigs. All you need is a handsaw, because the handle on a handsaw is this shape for a reason. This is 90 degrees, so if you put your handsaw against a piece of timber like that, it gives you, let's flip it around, gives you a perfect 90 degree angle. 
when you cut that nice perfect straight line. But here's the thing, if you tip the handsaw like that, it gives you 45 degree angle to make picture frames. Just wanted to share that with you because not a lot of people know that. So there you go. The handle of a handsaw is this shape for a reason. <laughs> right, let's go cut another three of these. I don't need to use this now. Now I've got one, I just simply use this as a template and that's the best way to get it straight and square and get them all the same length as well. Just use, just cut one first, and then lay this on a piece of timber and use these edges to mark it out. That way you know you're going to get four pieces exactly the same length. Really simple. <sighs> Must rush. <laughs> well, I've managed to suspend the frame in place, so now I know it's square, it's, it's in the right position. And I've used these 100mm long screws just to hold it up there and make sure it's in the right place. 100 mil. <laughs> there you go, one in each corner, it's suspended and the point of this is it's just there suspended and I know it's square in the way it's got to be so now I can get my cladding, put it in place and screw it in place and then I can remove the frame and do whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, I don't think these screws are quite long enough though, they're only just in just a turn, so I think I need 105mm long screws, something like that. But nevertheless, that's just suspended there now, so I can fix this in place. But before I fix this in place, I'm just going to take this edge off here, because it, so it don't look like cladding, if you know what I mean. Because at the moment it's got this edge on it, so it's going to look like a frame made out of cladding. So I'm going to take that edge off, round it off, um, yeah, to kind of try and disguise it a little bit. So far, so good. Well, I have to say that was a lot more difficult than I anticipated, especially getting it all lined up nice and square. I've got a right neck ache now getting this done, but the end result I'm quite pleased with, although there are some gaps, but Rebecca's rather good with a caulking gun, so she's going to caulk in all these gaps, then paint it before we fit the frame. So now the framework should fit nice and flush around that frame there like that. I'm not going to push, push it in place because this simply clips into place. And I don't want to push this in place just in case it is difficult to unclip again. And also Rebecca needs to fit the little handle, the little windy handle that lifts the lid to the skylight. And we can't fit that just yet because this shaft isn't long enough. So she needs to order a longer shaft so that this handle can fit in there and turn around and lift the lid. So that's one thing she needs to order, a longer shaft, and finish painting it off, clip this into place, it's all done, it's golden. Well, take a look at that. I think Rebecca's done a fantastic job. I'll get my big head out of the way, you can see. She's put the caulking in, she's painted it, and it looks fantastic. All I need now is a longer shaft. I've got that for you, Mel. Here you are. Oh, look at that. As if by magic, Rebecca turns up with a bigger shaft for me. Where'd you get that from? eBay. eBay? Well there you go, if you need one of these I'll get Rebecca to put a link in the description of this video because um, when I needed a longer shaft I really struggled to find one. So let's try this out for length. Should we try out this longer shaft see how well it fits or not? So look, looks a bit long to me. Well that is just a little tiny bit too long, so but that's okay, as long as it's too long we can always cut it down and make it a little bit shorter. So I'll find my axle, cut this down, and then put my shaft in place, then I'll hopefully put the frame up. Oh. <laughs> there you go, let's see if it fits now. Is it going to fit? Like a glove, look at that. Not like that. That O ring is going to clip over this. Hopefully, if I can just turn it the other way. And that O ring will go over the shaft. Yep, and it's just popped. So I just felt that nice little pop over the ring. <laughs> I knew this was going to be tight, but I didn't think it would be that tight. It goes in different sections. Yeah. Oh, crikey. <laughs> it's got a bite. Crikey, that works well. Yeah, that's it. It's flush there. It's flush in there. So 
Yeah, that's it. Well, there you go. I think that looks absolutely fantastic considering when it started off, it looked pretty horrible and I was really worried that it wasn't going to work. But I think I managed to repair it properly. Now, talking about properly, if you want to see a video of me fitting a skylight how I would normally fit it, then do check out this video here. And if you want to check out Rebecca's channel, click this link here. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, click that link there. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Ta for now. If you've got a corrugated roof like you have in a, you know, camper, like a... a, a <laughs>